creative apps, we already know how great Photoshop is for those AI cats. And DaVinci with its magic mask, so you're able to add yourself into your favorite I movie scenes. That. But this video is about those less spoken apps, workflow apps that make your day-to-day -day life as a creative a whole lot easier. But they're probably not gonna help cure your sore ass after being sat at a computer for five hours straight. Not me, standing desk, baby. CleanShot X. CleanShot is like your Mac's default screenshot app, but on steroids. You can capture stills of your screen and get them quickly annotated so all of your friends stop bothering you about how to post on Instagram from your computer. You can also record your screen for quick BTS clips of you working on that cool new edit of yours. I use this app almost daily to share quick recordings with my YouTube editor for feedback and any cool new edit tricks that I've discovered. As well as for making GIFs, I've recently been adding to onboarding docs for any new YouTube hires that I do. It's such a time saver to do this rather than solely relying on time out a long-winded explanation to your collaborators. And you come across as way more of a pro by taking a screenshot, adding an annotated arrow, and boom, super easy for them to follow your feedback. A favorite feature of mine from this app is the open history section that saves your recordings and screenshots over an indefinite amount of time. Meaning if that friend of yours wants to see that cute cat picture that you sent him over a month ago, you can easily pull it up to DM it his way again. The app costs $29, so I'd say that's pretty reasonable. I found a way to make this open history feature even more seamless. So stay tuned to the fifth app on this list for more on that. Toggle and Timery. I used to think I was putting loads of time into scripting my YouTube videos. Then I'd get to the end of a day and think, what the fuck? How didn't I finish that script with the six hours that I'd set aside to finish it? Well, that's because I was wasting a lot of time watching random YouTube videos and actually only doing little chunks of focused scripting. As soon as I started to track the time spent on these fully focused periods, I was shocked by how little it actually amounted to. For some reason in my head, I thought I was doing way more than I actually was. Tracking your time spent on tasks and activities is such an amazing way to know for sure how long it actually took you to finish them. And it's super easy to do this with the app Toggle. Make a project, write a description for it, and then hit a custom keyboard shortcut to start up your timer. For the app Timery, I only use this for the widget that it has where you can really quickly select any of your previous timers that you've used. Toggle doesn't have a native Mac app for now, and until it does, then I have to also use Timery a little bit. Another really cool feature that Toggle has is a Pomodoro timer within it, which helps me to kickstart the activity of scripting so I don't feel too overwhelmed with the task of having to completely finish something. When instead I can just focus on a goal of completing a focused 25 minute time block. And by the end of that counter, my momentum has already been built up and I can more easily put additional hours into writing. And while you have the momentum of your mouse cursor, why not give that subscribe button a cheeky little click if you've learned something so far? I'd really appreciate that. Toggle has paid plans, but I've been using the free one for years now without any issues. And a subscription to Timery costs about $10 for the year. Fantastical and Todoist Sync. A calendar and a to-do list should work together like British tea and biscuits. And the natural language processing of these apps is really what makes the workflow so nice to use. The biggest issue with free calendar apps like Google Cal is that if you want to input an event, you have to go for a bunch of clicks to assign it into your schedule. But with Fantastical, you can literally type in call mama at 2 p.m. tomorrow, hit the enter button and it's there in your calendar. I personally have a time block schedule set up within Fantastical so I know when and which days I'm going to be working on YouTube scripting or shooting a YouTube video. And if I have a task that I need to be reminded of at a later date, I can add it within Fantastical or to do is because they both two-way sync with one another. My quick workflow for this is to hit my custom keyboard shortcut of control option command to open up the mini window for to do is. Type whatever needs to get done, hit enter, and then it will sync up with my calendar and my to-do list. I'd previously messed around with having a calendar and a to-do list app separately before, but this lack of a two-way sync would always mess things up for me because I would miss a task that I had assigned on my to-do list app because I was spending most of my time during the day in my calendar app. But now it's almost impossible for me to forget a task that I've added, unless I purposefully choose to ignore it. Clean that cat poop? Why can't they clean it themselves, the dirty buggers? Huh? Fantastical is $4.75 a month, billed annually. And Todoist has a free version that I was using for ages, but I eventually upgraded to the $4 Pro plan just because it had a few handy features. I know there's a lot of free apps where you can basically do the same thing as these, but if their UIs make me want to open and interact with them more, then it's well worth the cost of a free Free apps like Google Cal or any other task based app that you can find. Tech Sniper. There's a bunch of times when I was using my computer and I wanted to copy some text on something, but I just couldn't. This is where Tech Sniper comes in. All you've got to do is set up an easy keyboard shortcut, hit it to pull up the crosshair, drag that across wherever you want to copy, and boom, paste that baby wherever you want.
No, not that baby. You might think that you can just drag and right click on most stuff that you want to copy, but I've been constantly surprised by how many times this isn't possible within a particular app or within a certain scenario that I'm doing on my computer. I've even gotten so used to this and so lazy with it now that I often prefer this keyboard shortcut to copy and paste any text. It costs $8 for a one-time payment, which is super affordable for the amount of times that you're gonna end up using this. Raycast. This is basically a search engine for your Mac where you can do simple things like opening up an app or a file using just your keyboard. Your Mac actually has a built-in tool like this called Spotlight, but there's so much that it can't do that Raycast can. But you can even do crazy stuff like initiating actions within an app without even having to open up the app window itself. As I mentioned before with the app CleanShot X, I installed an extension for it in Raycast that allows me to open up the history browser with just my keyboard, just by writing this action and hitting the enter button versus having to navigate my mouse up here, click on the thing, go down, and then click on that button. Mm, am I just being lazy that this little mouse moves movement is just too much for my puny wrists to handle. I also use Raycast for stuff like quick maths calculations and for translating stuff in Hungarian emails that I get because I don't really have any idea what they're saying. I have the free version, but there are paid plans with extra features that might make sense to you. But for me, none of them have grabbed my attention to tempt me to pull the cash from my wallet just yet. Unhook Freedom and Newsfeed Eradicator. You know when you're trying to get some work done and Instagram and Twitter are just a click away and you say, okay, this is just gonna be my little 30 second break and those 30 seconds turn into five minutes, 10 minutes, half an hour, an hour, and then, oh crap. I've wasted so much time. And now it's like 10 times harder for you to get back into a focus zone on the important stuff you need to do. Yeah, this was pretty much a daily struggle for me. And to be honest, it kind of still is a little bit, but these apps certainly helped with it. Unhook is a YouTube specific blocker that turns the whole website into nothing but a search engine. So that's no recommended videos on your homepage at all, no comments, no suggested videos on the side of a video that you watch, which means the pattern of going onto YouTube and clicking on the first video that you see enticing you right in front of your eyes doesn't happen anymore. Newsfeed Eradicator is the same type of deal, but it works for different websites like Instagram, Facebook, and Twitter. Fun fact, I've had this app on my Facebook newsfeed for about six years now, and I haven't seen my newsfeed since then. And instead I just get a nice inspirational quote on the screen. Mmm, yes, mmm, very deep. I was just using these two apps initially, which did help a lot just to give myself a bit more friction before starting up a procrastination session. But sometimes I'd eventually give in and just remove the block on Twitter to alleviate some mid-work frustration until I then added the app Freedom on top of this. Freedom blocks apps and specific websites for a specified amount of time. So when I was in a work session and the distraction started to kick in, I try to open the web page and I'm greeted with this page instead. Now you can go onto the app and you know go into the session, end the session, and then that unlocks the whole internet back for you. But just that extra little barrier and acknowledgement that comes from my sometimes unconscious action of just going on Twitter when I'm a little bit bored for what I think is 10 seconds made me snap out of the second nature action that I'd been doing so often and made me realize, oh crap, I'm doing the thing that I'm not supposed to be doing. Okay, now back to work. You can even put a locked mode on this app that makes it literally impossible to end the session until the timer has been completed. Also, this app works on your computer and mobile as well. So you can have a session simultaneously block websites and apps amongst both devices. I know some people swear by deleting apps entirely or working without any internet so you can be fully focused on the task at hand, but I don't quite feel like I'm ready to take the more extreme steps like this for now anyway. All I wanna make sure is that when I get my head down to work on something, I'm not distracted by the hundreds of other equally and probably more interesting things than the work that I'm doing right now. All of these apps are free except for the app Freedom, which is a one-time payment of $40. So if you feel like you need that extra bit of restriction to prevent your temptations, then I suggest picking it up as well. And finally, we have Notion. I left this last because unless you've been living under a rock for the past couple of years, you've probably heard millions of other productivity YouTubers making a bazillion videos about how much they love this app. And I'm gonna do the same here. Notion has been my second brain for the past five years now, with so many elements of my life stored, organized, and developed within Notion. From tracking all of my money and finances to my whole YouTube workflow. I'm even saying these exact words that I'm saying right now 
from a Notion script that I previously typed. I'll make a bigger video about this sometime in the future, but here's a little sneak peek at my whole YouTube workflow in Notion. Each block is a video idea that I have, and within each one contains all the planning that needs to be done to make a video happen. I also have a release calendar that I work from so I can keep up the consistency with regular uploads. There is a free version of Notion that I use for a while, but now I personally have the Pro Plus plan. So I get a few extra features like a longer page history archive and the ability to add any file of any size within the app. Speaking of free stuff, you should check out this free video right here where I share nine life lessons about creativity that you ought to know. This free videos on YouTube? Oh, incredible. Hit that subscribe button if you haven't, because if you don't, I'm gonna start time tracking all of the times that you've been Googling pictures of Roger Deakins looking all suave and sexy in a black suit. Thank you so much for watching. I'll see you in the next one.